Now, earlier this morning, I had the absolute honor of uh, hopping on the subway up in my home community of Vaughan at the Vaughan Metropolitan Center Station, rode the subway down like thousands of commuters, tens of thousands of commuters do right across this province of ours every single day. We got off at Spadina Station, then hopped on the streetcar and rode it right down Spadina until we were just a few blocks away and then enjoyed a great walk over here, literally experiencing the kind of commute again that so many families across this province do on a regular basis. But here's the thing. We know that during this pandemic, ridership on our transit systems, both provincial and municipal transit systems, has dropped. We understand that we can't leave these numbers as low as they are. We also know that this province, the province that I love, the province that we love, the hardworking families here in Ontario are facing an affordability crisis. Every single week, every single month, prices are going up, people working harder and harder, but falling further and further behind. We have been talking as a party, the Ontario Liberal team, about ways that we can make life far more affordable for the people that we are working hard to represent. So you factor in that ridership has dropped during the pandemic and is still relatively low. The notion that hardworking families need a government at Queen's Park that is truly on their side. And also the fundamental notion that as less people are taking transit and life is starting to come back to normal, more people are getting back in cars and that's causing congestion on our roads. Even worse, it's making our environment worse off. It's not helping us in the fight against the climate crisis. All of these factors together require immediate and urgent and strong responsible action to make sure that people are getting that hand that they need as they're dealing with the affordability crisis, that people are quite determined and willing to hop back on transit right around this province, that people are able more easily to do their part to strengthen the environment and to fight climate change. And that is why I am so, so proud this morning to announce that an Ontario Liberal government will reduce transit fares right across Ontario down to $1 per ride within 100 days of taking office. <laughs> We're going to drop the transit fares down to $1 a ride. Monthly transit passes will be reduced again province-wide on both municipal transit systems, the GO transit system, down to $40 per month. Uh, this buck a ride province-wide is something that I know our team has worked hard to put together. This is something, again, that I know will help families who are working hard every single day of the week. Seniors, students, moms and dads who are just looking for that little bit, or in this case, big bit of extra help to make their life easier, to make their life more affordable. Uh, we are also going to make sure that support, provincial support for municipal transit systems operating is increased by $375 million per year because we know, we know that our municipal partners need additional support, especially as ridership is going to, we anticipate, grow with this move. Uh, they're going to need that support. You know, I think about this election campaign that's coming up in just over a month. Well, it's going to start soon, but election day is just over a month. And I think about the choice that literally sits right in front of the people of Ontario. A choice between the Ford Conservatives, who want endless sprawl, want to waste more than $10 billion on a highway. They call it the 413, a highway that's going to destroy farmland and parts of the Greenbelt, that's going to lead to more sprawl. And appallingly, when it's built, if it's built, and we're determined to make sure it never gets built, will only save a handful of commuters just a few seconds every single day. Imagine a world where commuters are looking for urgent relief. And Doug Ford's best solution is to say, wait more than a decade. I was thinking about this this morning as I came down on the subway. I'll be 49 in just a few weeks. Imagine that Doug Ford's best solution for gridlock relief in this province is to make an Ontarian like me wait until I'm eligible for CPP before theoretically I could get the relief. The sad part is there will be no relief with the highway that Doug Ford wants to build. And his idea for relief is far too often, far too remote into the future to actually help people who need it today. This Ontario Liberal plan, this buck -a ride province-wide that we are so proud of, will take, we estimate, 400,000 cars off roads right across this province. Again, it's going to make life more affordable. It's going to make life better for people in this province. If you live in my home community, you live in a place like Whitby or Mississauga, 
and you're taking the GO train every single day, this change alone will probably end up saving you about $300 per month, per month. If you're here in the city of Toronto and you, like Chi was just talking with me about a short while ago, you're going out to purchase your adult Metro Pass, this is gonna save you over $100 per month, over a thousand, over $1,200 per year. Ontario Liberals are determined to deliver this because it is the right thing to do. It's good for families, it's good for the environment, it's good for our commute, and it is exactly the kind of stark choice that sits right in front of the people of Ontario. The Ford Conservatives, who are determined to drag this province backwards, and a new Ontario Liberal team that is determined to move the province forwards, that's why I say, and I say it proudly, the choice is yours. The choice belongs to the people of Ontario, and in about 30 days, they're gonna have the choice to choose between moving backwards with Doug Ford or moving forward, delivering progress with the Ontario Liberal team. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you might have. Yeah, yeah so 375 million to be clear is a completely separate um, contribution or investment that our government would make uh, to support municipal transit systems across Ontario. Uh, we anticipate that the costing for this particular commitment today would be about $700 million, $710 million for year one, and then about $1.1 billion for year two. Uh, and we, we, you know, the number goes up because we, I really do believe uh, that there will be a, a growth in ridership as we continue to come out of the pandemic. And also because, well, let's face it, Ontario Liberals will make taking transit easier and far more affordable for Ontario families. Or is this a discussion that, that has happened can you say the, Sorry, can you say the first part again? Yeah, sorry. So is, is this something that you uh, also proposed when you were transportation minister? Is, is this something that you've talked about uh, in the past while you were in government? Yeah, look, for sure, for sure we were always looking for ways when I had the honor of serving as transportation minister to expand transit, to make transit more affordable and more accessible. Uh, but look, this is a new Ontario Liberal team. And we also have something that's a different circumstance from a few years ago, which is the pandemic itself. So we saw ridership plummet during this pandemic, sadly, because people were, first of all, not working a downtown or in urban or suburban centers. They were working from home an awful lot more. And we also know that people had concerns about uh, being in enclosed spaces during a public health crisis where the virus was being transmitted through the air. Uh, so this is designed to bring those ridership numbers from where they are right now. And I saw it, I saw it this morning on the subway, the subway car Certainly there were commuters on it with me, but it wasn't as full as I would have seen a couple of years ago. So we want the ridership numbers to come up. That's, again, that's good for the environment. It's good for people's quality of life. It's good for the economy. And so this is why we are bringing forward a plan that will help make sure Ontarians are set up for success uh, going forward. So we'll now take questions from the line. A reminder that reporters are asked to raise your hand using the Zoom function or type your question in the chat. We'll do one question and one follow-up, starting with Colin DeMello from Global News. Hey, good morning, Stephen. Um, Hi, so I wanted to ask about what happens in year two or in January 2024. I mean, a lot of people who obviously see these savings will use those savings yeah. for other items. Um, are they going to then see a huge and sudden increase in their transit fare? So on the TTC going up from a buck to 325, that could right. be um, quite a challenge for a lot of people. Sure. It? Yeah, it's, it's a really great point. So uh, we're prepared to make the commitment for this dramatic reduction, this buck a ride province wide. Uh, we're prepared to make the commitment for now until January 2024. But I'm a big believer in working co in collaboration with all of our municipal partners and of course the team at Go Transit and Metrolinx to keep a very close eye on how ridership is rebounding and we hope, we anticipate improving uh, between now and January 2024 before we make a final decision about what to do with transit systems and transit fares beyond that point in time. But here's the other thing to keep in mind. We are in the midst of the affordability crisis right now. Everything in life here in Ontario has gotten dramatically more expensive under Doug Ford and the Ford Conservatives. Groceries going up, the price at the pumps is going up, literally everything, the cost of housing has only gone up. This is after four years of Doug Ford. We, we can't wait two more years, four more years, or 10, 12, 15 years for Doug Ford's mythical highway north of Toronto. We need real relief right now. We need to get this done right now. That's why we're gonna deliver this within 100 days. And then again, we'll work in partnership closely with our municipal 
friends, our municipal partners, to see what to do come January 2024. Uh, thank you. On another note, uh, what do you make of the Prime Minister today making a pretty big announcement with uh, Premier Doug Ford just before the election campaign? It's one month out until uh, voters actually head to the polls. Uh, it, it, certainly you would have expected the Prime Minister would be campaigning or stumping on your behalf. Is there any expectation or are there any plans for Justin Trudeau to come to Ontario and stump on behalf of Stephen Del Duca? So first of all, let me say, uh, I think whatever they're going to say today, assuming that it brings more economic productivity and more jobs to this province, of course, uh, who wouldn't want to welcome that? Uh, I think it's really interesting to note that where we stand in this province right now as it relates to our manufacturing employment, in terms of the jobs that exist within manufacturing or have been created in manufacturing, we actually sit at roughly the same level that we did four years ago when Doug Ford first took office and made such a big deal about how he knew to bring business to this province and bring investment. You'll all, of course, recall the money that he spent to put up billboards at the border like that was somehow going to magically make manufacturing jobs appear. So let's be clear, here and under Doug Ford over the last four years, there's been no meaningful growth in manufacturing jobs. Having said that, I'm looking forward to hearing what I hope will be good news for Ontario families. Lastly, on the issue of the Prime Minister, let me also say, I look at today's activity and I suggest that the Prime Minister is governing, but Doug Ford is campaigning. Frankly, Doug Ford's been campaigning for well over a year now. Instead of doing the heavy lifting that Ontarians have required him to do, he's been off listening to his pollsters, listening to his campaign team, and not actually giving the people of Ontario the competent, responsible leadership that they deserve. Ontario Liberals will do that. We'll do that from day one, and we'll do it all the way through our mandate. We're going to go over to Randy Rath at CHCH. Yeah, hi, Stephen. Hi, Randy. Uh, I, I just want to ask you, are you going to pay for this by reinstating license plate fees? So I look forward to releasing our platform over the next few days or next number of days. I'm excited about the platform. It is responsible. It is fully costed. So unlike the Doug Ford budget of a few days ago, uh, which was a budget without a plan, and unlike Andrea Horvath's platform, which was a platform without a budget or a costing, the Ontario Liberal plan that's coming out soon will actually, because it's the responsible and competent thing to do, it will be a plan that is balanced, will move the province forward, and it will be fully costed. On the driver's license or the Valtag sticker, I've said in the past, Ontario families are struggling, uh, so we're not looking to make their life more difficult. That's why today I'm so thrilled to announce Buck a Ride province-wide, dropping transit fares down to a dollar for every ride, $40 for a monthly pass on go, and on every municipal transit system and on the Northland bus service uh, right across this province within 100 days of taking office. Okay, so uh, you will you will keep that cut. You're, you're not going to reinstate it. Um, are, are you also going to be able to expand Go like they've been planning to do to you know all day Go service to Niagara that sort of thing? Is that going to go ahead even though you're not bringing in any revenue from use of Go well, or, or very little okay. revenue? Randy, I know you're you're determined to have me make the rest of the platform announcements today. I and I appreciate that. But look, I <laughs> I am so proud of the fact that as transportation minister back in 2015. We actually launched, we were the government that launched two-way all-day GO service. I was the Minister of Transportation who stood proudly in St. Catharines with my good friend and former colleague Jim Bradley to announce that GO train service would be coming to Niagara. We did the same thing with Granville Anderson out in Bowmanville when we announced GO train service going out to Clarington, going out to Bowmanville. You will see in our platform in the next number of days exactly what the full transit expansion plan is. But as the minister who began the delivery of two-way all-day GO service, you can count on me to make sure that it gets delivered in the right way going forward, assuming that we earn the support of the people of Ontario June 2nd, which we're working really hard to do. We're going to go over to Alison Jones at CP. Hi, Stephen. Um, hey there. I know in your remarks you were uh, critical of a lot of the, excuse me, highway promises that the, the government has made. Uh, in particular, Highway 413. There are a number of other highway project announcements made in their budget. I'm wondering where you stand on those. Do you proceed with, for example, the, the widening of Highway 401 in the east that they're proposing, um, some of the QEW improvements? Yeah, it, look, it's a, it is a great question. I, I said while I was minister, I've said since becoming leader of the party, and now that I'm running for premier, I know that in many parts of Ontario, expanding, rehabilitating our highway system is critically important for goods movement and for our commuters and frankly for the safety of the traveling public. So 
investing in highways where it makes sense and when it makes sense is something that I did as minister, something that I would do as premier. What I would never do to the people of Ontario, though, is take well more than $10 billion of their hard-earned money and decide that the very best solution for that money, for, for people's money, is to invest it on a highway that will literally raise over farmland, wetlands will be destroyed, the green belt will be paved over in large measure. Uh, it's not going to save very many commuters. According to their own figures, just a small number of commuters, 10, 15 years out into the future, just seconds every single day. And why is Doug Ford really doing it? Doug Ford's not doing it because he thinks it's the right thing to do or because he believes that it's going to make life better or more affordable or give you relief. He's doing it to make the richest of his political donors even richer. It is appalling. It is unconscionable. I was the minister who stopped that highway the first time, and if elected June 2nd, we'll stop it once and for all. You've heard me say that we'll invest in public education with those $10 billion. But today, I'm here to say, in addition, we're going to deliver Buck a Ride province-wide. We're going to make sure that people in Toronto, for example, are saving literally hundreds and hundreds of dollars every year. And they're going to be able to save that money while they're making the environment cleaner and doing their bit to fight climate change. It is a really strong solution for the kind of progress that the people of this city and the people of this province want to see. All right, and um, speaking of, of your time as minister, there are some who are pointing out that transit fares went up multiple times under your time as, as minister. Do you bear any responsibility for this affordability crisis that's going on? Look, I think that what we've seen over the last four years is literally the cost of everything going up. I said this just a few minutes ago. In 2018, Doug Ford said he was going to make life more affordable for people in this province. He literally said in one of the last leaders' debates, I'm going to make it cheaper for you to buy a home and easier to do the same. And since he uttered those words and took his oath of office, the average price of a home in this province has gone up half a million dollars. And he's gone through four housing plans. So, and that's just one example. Cost of groceries, cost of trans, you know, transport and transportation, all of it's gone the wrong way since Doug Ford took office. So... Our plan, especially given what we've seen during this pandemic with ridership dropping, dropping to a point that is not sustainable or healthy, we're going to deliver buck a ride province-wide. One dollar for each transit fare on every municipal and provincial transit system and on GO and on the Northland bus service. We're going to make sure that monthly passes are $40, which again, you compare to what that costs today in Toronto for a Metro Pass, it's almost $160 per one month. We're going to drop that to $40. That's $120 per month. That's $1,440 per year for people who live right here in Spadina, Fort York. That is real, tangible affordability uh, delivery, or at least affordability crisis sort of combat, starting on day one. And that's what Ontario Liberals are going to deliver. So, oh, next up is John Michael McGrath from TVO. <clears throat> uh, good morning, Stephen. Uh, in terms of... Uh, this announcement uh, and your your opposition to the 413, I mean, 80% or so of Ontario commuters drive. The Tories are very clearly trying to appeal to motorists as, a, a, you know, a, a voting block with, you know, highway announcements and, and other changes. Uh, and, and, you know, you're here focused on transit today. Is the Liberal Party giving up a lot of political territory by uh, letting the Tories have motorists to themselves? Well, look, I appreciate the question, but let's be really clear. There's only one person of the four running to be premier who actually lives in the 905 area that'll be impacted by the 413. I've lived in the suburbs my whole life, first to Tobico and Vaughan for the last 30 years. Highway 413, as it's proposed, is going to go right through the northern part of my home community. So it might be an abstract conversation for Doug Ford as he's obsessively racing to make his richest political donors just that little bit or that big bit richer. Uh, but I, I don't believe we're surrendering anything here. I, I know the people that I live beside in Vaughan, just like the people here in Spadina, Fort York, and in Davenport and University Rosedale, they want a government that can do it all. They want a government that's going to make their life more affordable, not in 10 years, not in 20 years, right away. They want a government that's got a real plan to attack the climate crisis and make sure that our air is safer to breathe and cleaner to breathe, uh, a strong and protected environment. They want more green space, not less. They want life to be more affordable. They want, all, they want an economy that's thriving, but when we create that prosperity, it's broadly shared. And we know, we saw it last Thursday with the Ford budget, you know, a budget that has no plan in it. The Ontario Liberal Party that I'm leading, we have a plan. It's responsible, it's costed, it will deliver real progress 
on affordability, on the fight against the climate crisis, and so much more. Uh, so stay tuned for more details about the rest of the platform. But, you know, as a person who lives in the 905, in the affected area of the 413, I'm not giving up on anyone. My neighbors want to see transportation, transit, a strong economy, better affordability. Most importantly, they want a leader who is responsible and competent, and everybody in this province knows Doug Ford is neither. And uh, when you were running for the leadership, you talked about, uh, I believe it was 50% off off-peak uh, yeah. fares. Yeah. Um, is that something now that would get kicked until maybe 2024? Or do you, are you thinking about how that would work in the future? Yeah, it's, again, it's a great point. I mean, the, the big difference between while I was running for leader and today, of course, uh, the effect of the pandemic on ridership numbers that we've seen. Uh, I am I am actually quite a strong believer in trying to send pricing signals uh, as a you know a, a, as a concept um, out there. Uh, yeah, I think it's important. That's why I said 50% off during off-peak fares, wanting to uh, off-peak times, wanting to drive commuters to make different choices. And then of course we had the pandemic hit, and we saw ridership drop drop off as much as it has. So uh, this is uh, this will be part of an ongoing conversation, as I said, with our municipal partners and with the team at MetroLinks and Go. Uh, but for now, I'm delighted to announce that if elected, Ontario Liberals will de deliver buck a ride province-wide, $1 per transit fare, $40 for monthly passes, more support for municipal transit systems, and we're going to get the work started on day one, delivering within 100 days of taking office. We're going to go over to Steve Pakin from TVO next. Morning, Stephen. Morning. I well remember how much Liberals teased the Premier when he used the expression buck a beer, and you have numerous times today quite pointedly made a point of calling this buck a ride. You're not yeah. worried about getting teased back in return? No, look, I think it's all about priorities and values. We all, we all heard the big deal that Doug Ford made back in 2018, going to put billboards up, going to replace the license plates, going to make beer cheaper. I don't know about you, Steve, but the last time I went to the beer store, I think, or the LCBO, I think I thought the cheapest beer that I saw was just close to two bucks, about a buck 70. That's just one example of how Doug Ford has absolutely failed the people of Ontario. But forget about beer for a second. This is about values. It's about priorities. Ontario Liberals want transit systems that are strong, that are being used. We want to take cars off the roads. We want our air to be cleaner and safer to breathe. We want to make it easier for Ontarians to do their part to confront the climate crisis. And in the midst of the worst affordability crisis, I think in my life, or at least in a very long time, we want to give Ontarians real, real pocketbook relief not in five years, not in 10, but right away. Pocketbook relief for something that they value. In this case, public transit. Okay, my follow-up would be, I understand we are where we are, but it is coincidental that this commitment of yours could have been funded by not doing the license sticker re repeal. Can we assume that that is something that you would not have done were you in the Premier's office today? Can you just clarify, Steve, you mean the, the, uh, the Valtag piece? I would not have done that? No, this, the second year on this, if I understand it, it w would cost a billion dollars to the Treasury, which is the same money foregone right. by canceling the license sticker. We assume that while, you are, while we are where we are, that is not a decision you would have made were you Premier. Well, look, I think, again, uh, it would have been, I mean, I, obviously we're speaking hypothetically here, but I would just say, there's no getting around the fact that people are in an affordability crunch. I, I hear it literally everywhere I go in my home community of Woodbridge or in my travels around this province. I'm sure you hear it from people too. They just can't understand how, despite how hard they're working, and they are, Ontarians are hard workers by nature, that they're falling further and further behind. They, you know, families like mine that have kids who are 15 and 11 uh, really do wonder in a very serious way about where their kids are going to be able to afford to live or to rent. And I'm just talking about shelter. I'm not talking about frills, uh, going to the grocery store. It's one of the reasons we announced just a few days ago that if elected, we'll take 8% off prepared foods under 20 bucks by removing the HST from those foods. It is about trying to find creative ways, creative ways to make life more affordable for people when they're engaging in or participating in or purchasing things that they value, groceries and food. In this case, the commute. That's why I'm really proud of Bucca Ride province-wide. I don't think it's appropriate uh, for people to be ignoring, uh, for leaders to be ignoring what the people of the province are saying to them. I think they want to see leaders and teams that are truly on their side. And that's what this new Ontario Liberal team is determined to do. We're going to go next to Lisa, Lisa Shing, sorry, from CBC. 
Hi there, Stephen. Uh, Hi there. Just uh, on the figure, you say this plan will take uh, 400,000 cars off the road. Just yep. wondering how exactly you came to that figure? Yeah, so our platform, when it's released, will, will include some of the modeling that helps us get to that number. I don't want to waste my last question on this, but well, what, when are we going to see a plan as a follow-up <laughs> to my first question? <laughs> so it's obviously going to be coming relatively soon, but I just want to stress when the Ontario Liberal platform comes, up, comes out, uh, it is going to be fully costed, it's going to be balanced, it's going to be responsible, which is so remarkably different from what we've seen from, first of all, the Ford Conservatives, who waited an extra month, a month plus, to introduce a budget just last Thursday. By the way, they, they waited an extra month, so and then Doug Ford didn't end up paying the penalty. They changed the law, so Doug Ford didn't have to pay the financial penalty that you're supposed to in this province when you're late with a budget. But put that to the side for a second. They introduced a budget last Thursday, and it's a budget without a plan. And we've seen from the, you know, the NDP a platform without a budget, with no costing. I, I don't understand how the people of this province can legitimately take a look at either of what we've seen over the past number of days from, from both of them, both of those teams or those parties, and, and have any faith or confidence in their ability to responsibly and competently lead Ontario uh, after June 2nd. That's why the plan that we will be releasing soon uh, is fully costed, it is balanced, it is responsible. But I will also just point out that as far as I can tell, starting last fall, I believe that I put out more ideas and more costing around my ideas than either Doug Ford's budget or Andrea Horvath's platform. Again, I, I, think, I think they're playing a dangerous game with the faith and confidence of the people of Ontario. I'm not playing that game. We're not playing that game. Our platform's coming soon. It'll be responsible. It'll be costed. And we've got a question from Wyatt Sharp on the line as well. Uh, hi, Stephen. Hope, hey, uh, hope you're doing well. Um, since the announcement that you've made today, the NDP has already put out their reaction to the announcement. And I just wanted to ask you, since you just mentioned the NDP's uh, plan and Andrea Horvath, um, their uh, NDP MPP for Essex, Terrace Natashak, has said, uh, and I'm quoting here, under the Liberals and with Stephen Del Duca as the minister, transit got worse and worse. Uh, when Stephen Del Duca actually had the power to make transit affordable, um, his priority was millions uh, on a go station in his riding for him and his developer buddies, and then end quote. So I guess I'm just wondering your overall reaction to um, the NDP's reaction to that, and um, I guess just what you would say. Well, look, I guess it's not a surprise that they're going to try to keep beating that drum. Uh, that's kind of what they do. It's what they've been doing for months. It's why they spent millions of dollars uh, over the last six, seven months attacking me and attacking Ontario Liberals. I'm You've heard me say this before, Wyatt, I'm not engaging in that kind of fight. Uh, there is a very clear and stark option and choice in front of the people of Ontario over the next 30 plus days. That's between the Ford Conservatives, who are on the wrong side of every issue, who have a very cruel and callous approach, no minimum wage increases, moving backwards on paid sick leave, spending 10 plus billion dollars on a highway that won't help anyone except making the richest even richer. Uh, and the list goes on from there, undermining public education, public health care, doing nothing to protect our seniors, just wanting to continue to stack them like cordwood on institutions. That's Doug Ford's way. That's one option. The other option is the Ontario Liberal team, the new Ontario Liberals, who I'm so proud to lead, who will deliver on more affordability, like buck a ride province-wide. We're going to do that within 100 days of taking office. Uh, we're going to move forward on making sure that our moms and dads, our grandparents are protected so they can age at home and have dignity and be safe and healthy at all times. We're going to end for-profit long-term care. We're going to make sure that we're planting 800 million trees and naming five new provincial parks. We're going to do all of this while we're delivering real economic dignity for workers and their families and small business entrepreneurs. This is a plan that is responsible, competent, balanced. It's a plan that the people of this province can count on. So the NDP and the Conservatives, they're going to keep doing their old thing. There's a choice here. Backwards with Doug Ford and his team forwards with determination and hope and optimism with the new Ontario Liberal team. The choice is yours. And then just to on a like briefly unrelated topic, but the election's going to be called um, this coming week. I know you made um, commitments to, I believe it was 30 under 30 candidates and a certain amount of female candidates as yeah. well. I mean, where are you at in terms of fulfilling yeah. those promises and will you have um, the majority of your candidates nominated at least by the time the election is called? 
Thanks very much for that question. Uh, Wyatt, you are quite correct. While running for leader, I did commit that we would have at least 50% of our candidates be female. A number of weeks ago, I was so proud to announce that we hit that goal. Uh, we'll see how it turns out when the full roster is in place in just a few days. We may even end up exceeding the goal by a little bit, but regardless, we've hit that goal. And in terms of younger candidates, and I say this as a former campus club president for the Ontario Young Liberals, I'm so proud that so many young women and men have stepped forward uh, to run for us in so many different communities. I think at last count, we're somewhere around 12 who are under the age of 30 and quite a few more who are under the age of 40. So we've made tremendous progress. Uh, let me just go back to female candidates. That's the first time in our party's history that we've managed to hit that goal. And it didn't happen by accident. It happened because together we created a plan, then we rolled up our sleeves and we did the hard work that was required to deliver on that plan. I think that's frankly a metaphor for how we intend to lead the province of Ontario. We have a plan and we're gonna show up, we're gonna roll up our sleeves, we're gonna keep our heads down and we're gonna do the work and the heavy lifting that's required to actually deliver on the plan. And I'm looking forward to having that chance should we earn that honor on June 2nd. And we're just gonna take one last question from John McGrath again. Last question. Uh, thanks, Stephen. I appreciate the other uh, the, the get, second bite at the apple. One. You get a bonus one. <laughs> uh, you mentioned your belief in using pricing signals, uh, but you were also one of the voices uh, in cabinet opposed to uh, road tolls back when that was being considered under Kathleen Wynne. And I'm just wondering, uh, you're within sight of the gardener right now, if I don't miss my guess. Um, <laughs> it, would the Liberals uh, forswear any use of road tolling uh, where it doesn't already exist in Ontario? Well, look, I was also the Minister of Transportation who delivered on high occupancy toll lanes. There's a concept that we brought forward when I was Minister. Again, those are an example of how you can creatively send a pricing signal. But also, let's remember the environment that we're in right now. You know, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, we didn't have the affordability crisis that in effect, Doug Ford's lack of leadership and lack of responsibility and competence has only made worse. We are in a unique moment right now where the cost of everything is going in the wrong direction. And Doug Ford, Doug Ford is off doing the things that he's done all the way through for four years. All the gimmicks, all the gimmicks, you know, the license plates, uh, you know, the billboards at the border, uh, all that stuff. We're not doing that. We have real solutions. They're balanced, they're competent, they're responsible a real plan backed up with real numbers that people will be able to count on. And that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.